Hello history fans and welcome back to Hello Week. Um, if you didn't look at the thumbnail or the title of this video, I'll give you two guesses what this video is going to be about today. That's right, we're talking about witches, baby. <laughs> um, I like witches and folklore and all the magic behind them. So today's episode, today's, yeah, today's episode of Hello Week is witches. <laughs> So obviously, most famously, we have the Salem Witch Trials, where um, 19 people were tried and accused of witchcraft after young girls had um, unexplainable fits. And then we have James I of Scotland bringing the witch hunt over into England as well for us. Possibly the first like big witchcraft thing is 1431, when Joan of Arc is burned at the stake for witchcraft and heresy. Because there's no other reason why a girl could have led a French army and beaten the English army. Clearly, she had to be a witch. And all the turmoil in the 15th century could only also be explained by witches, of course. And of course, all throughout history, people believe in unseen forces having an impact on their lives in many different ways. And they know that nature can affect us in positive or negative ways. And some people... Ooh, some people don't know how that works and some people do and the people that do of course are witches <laughs> elizabeth the first even had a ring that protected her from the plague and it did actually work she didn't get the plague most towns had a wise man or woman or a wizard or a sorcerer who knew about potions and healing things and sometimes they had evidence that all random acts of nature foretold the future accurately and of course pop culture has always drawn on folklore People through time would have seen drawings of witches or um, people flying in cloaks. There is a quote from the Bible that says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live but nothing more, really. Um, so that's the first time we have a quote, really, as opposed to like the images of magicians in flight or um, healers. People thought their healers were witches. Um, but then we have Himlik Kramner's Witch's Hammer or... Malleus Maleficarum in 1487 and he says that torture is a good interrogation technique for finding new witches. I'm just going to wear it like this. <laughs> His book was the second best-selling book in Europe for over a century, only second to the Bible. There's also a quote from 1552 that says, when we be in trouble or sickness or lose anything, we run hither and thither. Thither. <laughs> I did that in the... um bedtime history episode I kept saying thither because it was spelt like that it's just tither um, we run hither and thither to witches or sorcerers whom we call wise men seeking aid and comfort at their hands Malleus Maleficarum tells us that the apocalypse is coming because the devil has caused a certain unusual heretical perversity to grow up in the land of the lord a hearsay I say of sorceresses since it is to be designated by the particular gender of which he, Satan, is known to have power. His book also describes the many evils of the females who are practising witchcraft. And now it would just be hugely misogynistic because if women had powers, they wouldn't use it to, you know what I mean? Like they'd do better things than just accidentally kill you when trying to help you. But sadly, the economic, religious and social upheaval and changes of the 16th century just accelerated the witch hunt to a deadly pace for these women. They stood no chance. It was lethal because the 16th century Christians saw witchcraft as a genuine real threat. In 1560, there was a stream of demonic events across European towns and cities that meant um, witchcraft was obviously just absolutely at its peak and between 1560 and 1800 between 50 between 50 and 100,000 people were tried for witchcraft most people of course had nothing to do with the events 80% of whom were women mostly older widowed women as well lying in nurses were also common targets because they dealt with women who had just given birth to their infant babies two of the like highest mortality rates ever and because the Malleus Maleficarum tells us that torture is a good way of exposing these witches, the local hangmen, who would later hang the witches, carried out the torture technique on the accused witches. How many times did I say witches in that sentence? They would 
firstly, well, they would strip them naked and examine their bodies for any marks of witchcraft, like moles or saggy areas or like bruises and things, because they're not just things that naturally happen to any anyone, but also older women. They're clearly a mark of witchcraft. And many of the tortured people just gave false confessions because they wanted it to be over, which is really sad. And of course women are more susceptible to the devil's trickery, which is why it was mostly women who were accused and killed. Some suspects were even examined for years um, with torture put in every now and again just to make sure that they weren't just mentally ill or in need of help and they were in, um, in league with the devil. Because examining people over a few years whilst torturing them doesn't just then give you like a PTSD person struggling, it just shows you if they're either a witch, a healer or mentally disturbed, clearly. But it was always conducted by the nobleman who had the last word over these poor people. So let's have some stories of specific witches. Ursula Southill, otherwise known as Mother Shipton, was a prophetess, prophet, prophetess in, in England in the 1500s. Um, she was apparently the daughter. She didn't want me to talk about her, obviously. She was apparently the daughter of a witch, Agatha Saville and the Devil. And she was called Hagface because of her ugliness and disfigurement. But she was considered the best clairvoyant of England at the time. Because her prophecies foretold a lot of great phenomena like Spanish Armada, the Plague of London, the Great Fire of London, Execution of Mary Queen of Scots and the Internet. And then we have the Great Noise, which was the largest witch trial ever in Sweden. In July 1676, the widow Malin Masdotta was accused of witchcraft by her own family. My phone ran out of storage, just like two more minutes, please. Um, her own daughters accused her of abducting their children and taking them to a um, satanic Sabbath. And because it was her own daughters testifying, she was tried and executed for witchcraft. Tituba is the person you'll know from the Crucible, um, but she's a slave in America, and she's the first woman accused of witchcraft by Abigail Williams and Elizabeth Paris, the ones who were having the seizures in the Salem witch trials, and um, she um, falls to the torture and gives a, a very disturbing um, confession of like setting a black dog on them, riding brooms, and baking witch cakes. And in 1662, Isabel Galdi gave uh, her own very specific confession without being tortured. She confesses her coven's, coven's activities and even says that they can transform into animals, which fits in with the folklore at the time. And she claimed to have visited the Queen of the Fairies in her home under the hill. There's so many more witches I want to talk about and I'm going to make more videos about them, but today my phone is just going to give up. So I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye!